The season's second half is here. What are your team's chances to qualify for the playoffs? Speaking of the Kelly Cup competition, there's been a change. We'll elaborate. And there are nine new head coaches in ECHL this season. We'll hear from one of them. Another ECHL Week show starts now. Hi, welcome to another edition of ECHL Week. I'm Barry Schickling. Let's get things started today with a look at where things stand headed into the second half of the season. So now that it's February and most teams have reached the midpoint of their schedules, let's take a look ahead with an idea of what the future might bring in terms of the postseason for all 27 teams. It's been difficult to get a great read on just about every team this season because almost all clubs have had ups and downs, and in some cases, outs, at least in terms of not having any scheduled games for weeks at a time. Of course, COVID has affected every team, in some cases directly by forcing players to the commissioner's exempt list, at other times by necessitating numerous call-ups to both national and American Hockey League affiliates. But most of the players who filled open positions on ECHL teams have performed admirably and kept the quality of play near normal and entertaining. We start our look at where things stand in the Western Conference. In the Central Division, thanks to an outstanding home record, Toledo has been setting the pace recently and all indications are that will continue. The ECHL leaders have been paced by veteran TJ Hensick who has been scoring at more than a point per game clip. Randy Gozola has been leading the blue line in scoring and in the net prior to an AHL call up Billy Christopoulos was solid. Since Christopoulos has been gone Max Malosic has posted seven wins in his first ten outings. After Toledo in the Central Division, Fort Wayne, Cincinnati, Kalamazoo, and Wheeling have been jockeying for the remaining three playoff spots, as will likely be the case in all the postseason races, whichever team can get back most of its called up players and stay healthy is likely to have a leg up on the others. Indy has been very streaky this season. If the Fuel can have a couple more of the up streaks than the down ones, they're not yet out of contention. Even first-year Iowa, which earned just 13 points in its first 20 games, has shown marked improvement, 23 points in its second 20. The Utah Grizzlies have been riding high in the Mountain Division since the season's start, and their record of 15 games over 500 against their divisional rivals has put them in a good spot in terms of a playoff position. Much like the Central, four teams are sniffing three playoff spots. Idaho, Tulsa, Rapid City, and Allen are all a decent winning streak away from putting themselves in good shape or a lengthy losing skid from losing touch with the others. Both Kansas City and Wichita, which have struggled to maintain plus 500 records, have some real work to do to make the postseason a reality. Over in the Eastern Conference, the team with the best home record in the ECHL so far is Reading. Just one regulation time loss in their barn has helped the Royals to the top of the North Division. But they may have problems staying there. The North is the only group with three teams over 600. Both Newfoundland and Trois-Rivières are on Reading's heels. It'd be surprising if these three teams weren't involved in the 2022 postseason party. That leaves Maine, Worcester, and Adirondack in combat for the final playoff spot. All three are within a few games of 500. How these teams fare against one another in the final three months should make the difference. That takes us to the South Division, where Jacksonville and Florida have taken turns in the top spot over the last month or so. Atlanta and Orlando have done a similar do si -do in places 3 and 4. Of Greenville, Norfolk and South Carolina, only the Swamp Rabbits have been able to put together consistent wins over the past month. But with still 30 or so games left, none of those teams is so far away that a playoff spot is out of the question. However, all three have lots of work to do in that area. If you want to get a sense of where your team thinks it stands heading into the home stretch, watch what happens at the end of March. The 31st is the trading deadline, and both the buying and selling teams should be pretty obvious by that point. It's been decided that qualification for the Kelly Cup playoffs for the second consecutive season will be based on points percentage at the conclusion of the regular season. That's because it's unlikely that all teams will be able to make up all previously postponed games. 
As it stands now, six teams, including most of the North Division, will be unable to make up as many as five games. Of course, additional postponements or rescheduling of games could affect the remaining schedule. So it's all about points percentage when it comes to the standings and to see which teams remain active when the postseason kicks off on or about Wednesday, April 20th. Game highlights, plus we'll meet a new coach when ECHL Week continues. First-time buyers make up 35% of U.S. home sales. New buyers can benefit early by working with an experienced, trusted real estate advisor. In the Pacific Northwest, Will Springer is your trusted advisor for buyers and sellers. For a free consultation or to find a real estate agent in your area of the country, contact Will today. If I could be you. You could be me for just one hour. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. ECHL has suspended forward Jacob Panetta of the Jacksonville Icemen for the rest of the season as a result of racial gestures he made during the overtime of a game on January 22nd. Panetta, who's since been released from his contract by the Icemen, will have a conditional opportunity to apply for a reduction of the suspension and reinstatement after March 17th. However, that depends upon him successfully completing a learning experience conducted in conjunction with the National Hockey League's Player Inclusion Committee said ECHL Commissioner Ryan Greeland, insensitive actions and gestures, regardless of intent, cannot be tolerated in our game. We all need to learn and grow from this incident and remain steadfast to further educating and advancing our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout our league. Let's take a look at some of the activity which has been taking place in the ECHL during the last few weeks. It seems the 2022 All-Star Game just concluded, but plans have already started for the 2023 version of the ECHL's mid-season showcase. And a major step toward that goal has been announced. Norfolk will be the host city. The game is scheduled for Monday, January 16th at the Norfolk Scope Arena. Fan Fest, as well as the official induction ceremony of the 15th class of the ECHL Hall of Fame will also be part of the festivities. 2023 will mark the second time that the All-Stars have traveled to Norfolk. The team, then known as the Hampton Roads Admirals, hosted the best from around the ECHL in the league's second All-Star event in 1994. Norfolk will join Reading as the only cities to host two All-Star games. It's time to continue our look at new head coaches from around the ECHL this season. This time, Derek Army of the Wheeling Nailers. There's an asterisk next to Army's name. He actually took over as interim head coach near the end of last season. But after losing the interim part of his title during the summer, he's moved the Nailers from the bottom of the 2021 standings into a legitimate playoff contender this year. I thought last year, um, you know, granted Fort Wayne won it all, and um, but we went in, I thought we got pushed around in Fort Wayne. And... Um, you know, that's not the team that, that I was a part of, and I think that when we had success here in Wheeling, it was a team that was, you know, welcomed any game, whether it be physically or skilled. And so building a team around that was, was I think, the most important thing. Army's pleased so far with his team's compete level and most of the results this season. There's been some guys who really exceeded expectations. Um, so, so for us, obviously sitting at the record we have, I think we should we could have a better record, but it's one that um, our goal is to be in, in the playoffs at the end of the year. And right now we're very much in the playoff picture. So it's just kind of continuing that same uh, mentality. Army feels he's been as well prepared as a new coach can be, especially given he's had 42 players wear the Nailers colors so far this season. The wheeling record for one year is 56. You know, for, for me, obviously, when we acquired Hutchison was very exciting. and I kind of, you know, wanted to see what was there. And, you know, he really took off and um, he stepped up in a big way and, and arguably been our best player throughout the year. So that's been great to see. And um, there's been guys who have really stepped up. So, um, you know, throughout the process, it's, it's nice to see that. Uh, but from a, a standpoint as a 
anything I didn't expect. I, I don't. I don't know. I think it's just the the craziness of the year has been the. I don't think anyone expected that. How about some highlights? Let's take a look at some of the clips we've collected during the last month of ECHL action. We start with a bit of history. The oldest player in the ECHL this season, Atlanta captain Derek Nesbitt, isn't showing his age. Here's his 200th career ECHL goal, which came in a victory at Florida. And he's got his second of the night. That's his 200th ECHL goal for Derek Nesbitt. We all know that turnovers can lead to trouble. That was the case for Kansas City in this game at Boise. Idaho's Luke Brown takes advantage of the loose puck and helps his team to a victory. You don't do that to Luke Brown! A bad turnover and a do-it-yourselfer! And a 3-2 Steelheads! Toledo defenseman Cole Fraser caps a furious last-minute comeback with a last-second goal to help the Walleye earn a win over Fort Wayne. Oh my! Here's another walleye head turner. Brandon Hawkins employs the rarely used lacrosse technique to record one of his two scores in a victory over the Comets. Save Kalina off the stick of Hawkins. Hawkins finds the net. Try to stop and he scores! <laughs> That wraps up another edition of ECHL Week. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels. You know which ones they are. They keep you up to date all the time on what's going on in your favorite hockey league. We'll see you next time. We conclude with a great hockey intermission feature, more skating. Enjoy these young ladies working on their techniques between periods of a game in writing earlier this season.